Welcome back to Newsmaker Live. I'm Clinton Reynolds. Thank you very much for staying tuned. We have with us Mr. Michael Shasti, and of course, it has been a good one so far. It will continue to improve as we go along. And we, we were discussing politics and Alan Shastney's emergence as the leader of the United Workers Party. Now, one of the issues that has arisen as a result of that development is the concern, and Richard Frederick, you heard him last week speaking about it, that there is an inherent problem when you couple economic power with political power. And you, you touched on it a bit, but I want to go a little deeper into it. Mm -hmm. uh, do you see that as being a concern or on people in their right to consider the implications of, of such a union? Clinton, I don't think St. Lucians have to worry one bit about that. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you why. Vis-a-vis -vis the economy of St. Lucia, although St. Lucia is a small country, okay, the budget of St. Lucia is about a billion dollars a year, okay? Mm -hmm. And when you look at the gross earnings of CFL and the other companies, you're, you're probably talking four or five hundred million dollars a year, mm -hmm. okay? We have 1,800 people working for us. We pay $50 million a year in excise duties. We pay $51 million a year in salaries, and about maybe $8 million between NIC and income tax. Mm -hmm. Now, what you have to look at is here is a sound organization taking 1,400 people off the backs of government, paying them their salaries, educating them in their field, and making them responsible citizens, whereby 400 of them are handed a balance sheet three times a year, mm -hmm. so they can look at what the company is doing. And some of those people have already gone and become entrepreneurs. So you, it's a, almost like a university mm -hmm. we are running, okay? We're not taking the money and running anywhere. It's staying right in St. Lucia here. There are two ways of looking at a business. A business either grows or it falls back. Now, what you want us to do? We had one so market. Stay small and do what you have to do and then take a few dollars, put in your pocket and run away. We have put it back into the community. We have, or oh, I think, some 11 supermarkets today. Look at the building cost that has been created, okay? You have, as a result of that, architects, contractors, masons, plumbers, electricians, mm -hmm. you know, people seeing after refrigeration, stevedores on the wharf. We bring 250 containers a month. All that goes in into warehouses, people unpacking, we spent almost $5 million some 12 years ago in computerizing the whole system for the company, because I said you have 14,000 items, you know. I mean, the farmers will tell you, C CFL and Sandals probably buy 80% of all the agricultural products on the island. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they had to sell it somewhere else, but it means starting again. Mm -hmm. What happened to us when we were selling bananas to Europe and they took away our our, ta our concessions? We went down the tube. Mm -hmm. Same situation here. So you want to have people who can run businesses, okay? And in the process, we should, government should not look at and the people as a negative, but as a positive because we're working together. A government by itself cannot survive because a government g earns its money from taxes. And if there's no economic after, there's no taxes. You know, and people have to understand that. What is it? Let me tell you, sir. In my entire lifetime, I have never got any concessions from government. 
I have not con any concessions from government. I have not. I. I've been friendly with various prime ministers, only on a social basis. I ask them for nothing. I defy any minister to come and say that they ever gave Michael Shastri or my companies anything. You know. Mm -hmm. So, all, all I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I'm a faithful servant. That's all I'm doing. Running a good company, and we should not be. What's, what we, um, what's the word should I use? Um, um, forgot the word now. Anyway, we should not be looked as upon as a person who's uh, 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 representing uh, being negative to, to the economy of St. Lucia. We should look at it from a positive side, you know. Mm -hmm. And anybody who wants to come in and do business here should be allowed to come in and do business here. All the CARICOM partners should be coming. That's part of our problem today. Mm -hmm. Trinidad next door. Three rich Trinidadians have more money than the Sanusha government. Mm -hmm. right? I'm not afraid of that. Bring those people in. Mm -hmm. Let them build roads. Give them contracts. And also, you put tolls on the roads. So gov government has to stop spending money. They've got to bring fresh money into the country. Mm -hmm. uh, some people, some people ha are of the opinion that part of the demise of GL mm -hmm. was the activity of CFL as well. Yeah. In terms of... In terms of um, you know the the selling of products, whereas yeah. Grace products, for example, Correct. could yeah. have been sold at eleven yeah. outlets through um, s through Super J supermarkets. Right. Mm -hmm. When GL came in, mm -hmm. CFL no longer bought these products. Okay. You know because GL was yeah. the distributor. Well, not GL, but yeah, uh, Pete and Company yeah. was the distributor. Let, let me explain mm -hmm. something about the supermarket business. In Fort de France, Martinique, if you were in the wholesale business, you're not allowed to be in the retail business, and vice versa. Goddard's, or for that matter, any pe person, wholesalers, can bring in a product. They are now called middlemen. Mm -hmm. A wholesaler, an agent, is a middleman. And they say to you, okay, fine, I have a product, I'm going to sell it to you. And they tell you, I want to make, I'm giving an example, 20% profit. Mm -hmm. But you must sell it for 10% profit. So 30% profit. But you know what the problem? Nobody's taken into consideration. From the time that product, when a wholesaler brings it in, here is the, 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 the responsibilities of a wholesaler. beef on the shelf and it falls and it's dent. No one's going to buy that tin. Mm -hmm. And we have to have measures in place that when that happens, that has to go to the Marion home. Mm -hmm. It not be sold to anybody because if you do it, then they'll throw it down purposely and you have a problem on your hand. You see what I mean? Right. So this is the situation why wholesalers are becoming defunct and they will become defunct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, when God, before God is over, they would say, well, I'm allowing you to work. You have the consumer screaming at CFL. Price is too high. Kokma take you. Okay? <laughs> now, we're the ones getting the blows. So, as professionals, they have to go out and find that item where they can to sell it that and a lot of things happen here I said, we need a better price. He said, well, we can't give you a better price. That, that's it, you know. Um, and um, you have to go through the agent. I said, but th 
it's carnation milk, but it's only um, it's it's carnation is only a name. It's really evaporated milk. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we said, well, you will have your own brand. So I created my own brand, mm. and I said to them, but I want a better price. Say we cannot give you a better price. Say what this thing has what so many ounces. Say twenty ounces. Most people in Saint Lucia, they take the concentrated milk and put a little water in it. To, to, to I don't know if you're aware of that. Yes. To stretch yeah. it, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's all perception. Say, okay, fine. If you reduce that by a couple ounces, two to three ounces, say, I can give it to you 10 cents cheaper. Okay, we do that. You come, and then all of a sudden, the price of milk went down. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in business, you have to strategize, okay? You must strategize. And this is only one idea. But it's <laughs> take... Uh, chicken. When we first started, we kept telling the our agents, price is too high, price is too high, and oh, cannot do anything better, okay? We went to Philadelphia, I'm talking 15, 16 years ago. We could sell the chicken at 25% less than they were given to us. Hmm. Now, you see, but what you're doing, you're cutting off the wholesaler. Right. Okay, you're cutting them off. But we have a responsibility to keep prices low. Clinton, it's tough. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, what has aggravated the, 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 the market these days is the fact that places like India and China, who have together one sixth of the world who are living on the poverty line, have money now. Mm -hmm. So they're buying more. So that's our problem. That's our competition. It's not around here, and to, it's, it's tough, you know. But so we constantly ha have to be on the move, mm -hmm. searching for new areas. But they're coming up all the time. You know, look at, for instance, the guy who bought Sol, Mr. Kiffin Simpson. He, he bought 40,000 acres of land in Guyana, 134 miles mm -hmm. south of, um, of Georgetown. And he's already planted 10,000 acres. And, last month he put in a whole brand new m bit of machinery to do the rice so you know we can start looking at Ghana uh, for better products or, mm -hmm. or cheaper products you know but he's going to be swamped because a lot of people are going to go there you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and these are the things that go on so so business business is evolving you know and and we have to change with the times and, and with and with the circumstances yeah. now uh, going back to the politics did did you not see Stevenson King as the leader of the United Workers Party being able to re-engineer yeah. the UWP to the point where it would become competitive in terms of electoral politics. Yeah. You see, Clinton, like everything else, things change. Stevenson King is a great guy, wonderful individual, okay? Steve, in my opinion, um, what should I say? Um, was faced with a formidable competitor like Kenny Anthony. Mm -hmm. Kenny Anthony is a seasoned, crafty politician, okay? Um, he's a constitutional lawyer. He understands the business. He has a good team with him. You cannot beat the Labour Party when it comes to oil and machinery. Mm -hmm. But what happened? Even though Kenny had two terms, at age 81, what did Compton do to him? <laughs> Let me tell you something. If Compton was around this elections, there's no way the Labour Party would have won. And today, I feel politically, Stevenson King needs that extra killer instinct, uh, needed that extra killer instinct to bring home the bacon. Mm -hmm. And the, it's who, per, who voted? His own constituencies. Out of 17 constituencies, he probably got four. Yeah, three so, or four. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what does it tell you? You know, Vox Populi, the voice of the people. Mm -hmm. The people spoke. So they saw what was going on, you know. The people are not fools, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they just figured, look, they wanted a change, they wanted a, a, a force. 
every party wants to get in power, and they made their choice, and they figured that's a team that could bring home the bacon. And that's it in a nutshell. Now, now Richard Frederick, he, he made a comment in Parliament one time, I'm sure you're aware of that yes, one, uh -huh. um, where he quoted you as saying that Alan was like a kid in the candy yeah, store. Um, first of all, was that, was, was that a comment that you made to him? Never made any such comment. That's why I didn't even mm. answer Richard. You know, mm. Richard says these things. Richard, I'll tell you something about Richard Frederick. You have, in all fairness to the guy, Richard Frederick caused the United Workers to win the elections, the first elections. Mm -hmm. Even though Sir John was there, he, he, um, he stirred the party. He gave it a lot of... Um, movement, okay? But you see, a lot of people can't handle power. And that's part of Richard's problem. You see, power, you have to know how to handle power. Because really and truly, power is only uh, 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 temporary. Yeah? Mm -hmm. It's the people that had give you the power. And once they withdraw it, that's it. Richard was looked upon a lot. but And you see, those comments he made, actually hurt him more than anything else. Yeah, they were unnecessary, they were stupid, okay? And even the last comment he made, which was on the Star newspaper on the Saturday, actually hurt um, Stevenson King far more. Because remember, he endorsed Stevenson King, and Stevenson King endorsed Rufus. Mm -hmm. So people just automatically coupled all those guys together, and they already had their concerns, you know, and that was also part of it. You so know? you're saying that, that the fact that Stevenson King mm. was aligned or uh, was perceived to be aligned with Richard Frederick and Rufus Buski led to his ultimate downfall? Well, the thing is this, that that's what the, I picked up mm -hmm. at the convention, that people felt, you know, that um, he was controlled and he wasn't in control himself, but other people had too much of an influence over him. Whether it was them only, I don't know, but the fact is that people want to see their own man in power. They don't want to see, you, they, there's something called consensus, you know? But if you see you have a party of 12 or 13 people, and it's perceived that two persons, whether it's Richard or Bousquet, or, or, or Rufus or anybody for that matter, uh, they're seen. They don't like it. They want to see a strong leader. Now take Kenny Andy. Kenny Andy is a very strong leader. But in my view, he's too strong. <laughs> and that's the problem. And that the, his own ministers, you know, um, you know they, they're actually afraid of Kenny. Mm -hmm. They dare not say anything to him. And that's also bad. Because no man is an island. You cannot have one person dictating policy all the time. Because, you know, there are things, that you, you, times you can be wrong, okay, and it's good. I personally, maybe I'm wrong, in my whole life, throughout my 60 years in business, I have never taken a decision unilaterally. Mm -hmm. Always ask somebody, what do you think? Because they see something, sometimes you miss something. Look, be careful, Mr. Shasti. If you go and put something here, you know, that, has, that thing failed. I'll give you an, an example. When I was in the shipping business, I got a contract once to move 15,000 tons of sugar from Guyana to somewhere. And there was a 17-year-old guy who was just um, assistant cook on board. And we used to trade all over the world. So they were very happy to go to their, their own destinations. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, Charles, you know something? We got three trips to Guyana. You'd be happy to go home. He said, yes, Mr. Jassi, but don't take it. I said, why? He said, because it's a sunken ship and the Port Authority have not been able to identify where it is when they go in because he said it's a very, it's a, like a 20-foot tide in Ghana. It gets covered with sand sometimes and they're being misled. I said, but we should be able to have a mark and get it. I said, I'm telling you, many ships have hit it, okay? I didn't take the contract. I was living in New York at the time and my, the people I worked with sent it down. They, they took the contract. You know, they hit the ship and smashed the ship. The ship was here for three years. Uh, mashed mm -hmm. up all the rudder, the propellers, everything. Mm -hmm. uh, sunk now. So you see, a, a little guy who told me so. So it's good to talk to people, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, now the, the, the future of Ri Richard Frederick and Rufus Buski uh, in yeah. particular, I mean, uh, they, those names have been raised 
in the context of the UWP and their polarizing effect on the party mm -hmm. and also probably on the electorate. How, where do you see their future in the UWP or do you see a future for them in the new United Workers Party uh, as it is now constituted? Um, it's a difficult question to answer but I think both Richard and Rufus have to do some soul searching, revisit their past, the present and their future mm -hmm. and at that point in time they will have to make their decision mm -hmm. because they are certainly not stupid people okay and St. Louis is a very small place so they just have to ask some questions see where they're going and see whether they can help the party or destroy the party mm -hmm. but the fact that some people have said that with the new people who have been voted, all the nine officers, it has divided the United Workers Party. I don't buy that. I see an energized party that's on the way forward and I can only see that party becoming better and stronger by the day as it stands today. I think people like Isikal is a very strong guy. I didn't know the gentleman. Alice, Alan always had a lot of respect for Isikal Joseph. But Isikel is a very strong leader, and he's not going to tolerate any nonsense as chairman of the party. He's going to ask a lot of questions, and he will make the right decision. Mm -hmm. Now, I if, if these gentlemen do not make those decisions, uh, you know, do not do that soul searching, as you put it, yeah. and um, come up with a plan that would be in the interest mm -hmm. of the United Workers Party and the new direction that they're taking, mm -hmm. uh, do you see the, the present crop mm -hmm being able to exercise enough power mm. to force them out if they do not decide to to move on on their yeah. own. I think anybody in the party who does not want to toe the line or to do what is right for the party um, will be sidelined. I'm not saying they're going to sideline them, but will be sidelined because the chairman of the party knows what he has to do, okay? He's certainly not a fool. He's been there already. They got clobbered, they know why. So you know, a, a fool is one that makes the same mistake twice. Mm -hmm. So, but basically, from what I hear, I'm not a, a lawyer or politician. I heard said that you can't kick somebody out of a party, but what you can do, people, if you don't, for instance, uh, the, the leader of the party and his team are the one that choose the, um, the what you call the MPs for the various constituencies mm -hmm. and the ball is in their court mm -hmm. and we just have to wait and see. Mm. Let's take a quick break right now on Newsmaker Live. When we come back we'll be taking your questions for Mr. Michael Chastney so don't go away. We'll be right back on Newsmaker Live. Stay with us. Mm -hmm.